So the remote control, which comes with the uh, the starter bundle with remote and also the super kit, allows you to drive your robot around um, sort of wirelessly. It it's, uh, runs on 900 megahertz. It's a nice little wireless radio. It's really cool because the battery that they have on the radio only takes about an hour or two to charge, but you can get up to 60 hours of use out of it. Uh, so you don't really have to charge them very often. Um, now, when we start programming with remote controls, what's going to happen is, is that we will get data from the remote control, and then we use that data to make decisions in our program. So because the remote control is always sending new data, any of our remote control behaviors that we do will be inside of a uh, repeat forever loop, as that repeat forever loop will allow us to constantly update the motor speeds. Otherwise, our remote control might seem slow compared to our robot's responsiveness. So in order to set up your remote control, what you'll need to do is you'll need to take your remote control and include it in your kit is a tether cable, which is actually just an ethernet cable. So any old ethernet cable, as long as it's not too long, should be able to work. And when you turn on your brain and it's at the main menu, you just connect it together and it will go ahead and learn. So basically each brain and remote control have a unique number and they basically learn each other's numbers so that they only that robot will connect with only that remote control. So you make that connection, they learn each other's identifying numbers and that lets them communicate from there on out. If you're in a classroom environment, you don't have to be very strict about making sure that you keep the right remote control with the right robot you can do this tethering as many times as you would like. So you can basically just tell everybody, you know, grab a robot, grab a remote control, grab a tether cable, and it takes all of about five seconds in order to make that tether connection. And that will then let your robot get up and running. Inside of the remote control, you have four joystick axes labeled channels A, B, C, and D, which they're marked on the little sort of silk screened information that's on the remote control. And then you also have eight buttons that are available as well. The eight buttons are button E up, button E down, button F up, button F down, button R up, which is right, button R down, button L up or left, and button left down. And you can see that on the remote control, if you look at it, they're labeled with kind of what the different controls are. And inside of Robot C, the values that you would get is whenever you press a button, that button will report a value of one. Whenever it's not pressed, it reports a value of zero. And the joystick axes will report values between negative 100 and positive 100. So as you move them around, as you move them to each extreme, they'll be from positive 100 to negative 100, which matches well with our motor speeds as well, since those are in percents of uh, uh, values as well, so you'll be able to map the two together. So an important thing to keep in mind though is that the VEX IQ brain, it has two modes. It has a tell-off mode and it has an autonomous mode. The way we've been using it right now is the autonomous mode where we haven't needed a remote control at all. When we, in order to use the remote control, we have to switch it into tell-off mode. And what this does is it then tells the program that, hey, I'm going to be using a remote control. And inside of the VEXIQ brain, what happens is, is that if you were trying to run a telop program and your remote control is not currently powered on and it's not linked with your robot, your program will never run. The brain basically won't run the program until it has a remote control linked. So if you're running into all kinds of issues when you're trying to program your robot, you're like, why isn't anything working? Make sure that you check this VEX IQ controller mode to say, do I have a controller attached or do I not? I recommend leaving it in autonomous mode for any of your general programming and only putting it in telop mode when you know that you're gonna use a remote control. Otherwise, if you leave your remote control at school or you just don't have them out right now and you try to download a program in telop mode, it just won't work. It'll give you an error message saying, I can't communicate with the brain because the brain doesn't have a remote control linked. So in order to change this mode, you can do this from the robot menu under the VEX IQ controller mode. And from this, you'll be able to toggle to telop mode, send your program over, and then everything will work for your telop program. 
So we'll take a look at this in Robot C when we get started to program. So there are three remote control commands that we have available in natural language in order to get our robot up and running. The first one is called tank control. And what tank control does is it uses the sort of the, uh, the Y axes of your remote controls, so your channel A and your channel D, in order to map those to your left and right motors. So basically the left joystick moving up and down will make your motor move forward and backwards. And the right joystick moving up and down will make your robot move, or your right motor move forwards and backwards. The threshold value, which is by default set to 10, is basically just a way of saying, if I let go of the remote control, they don't always go back to perfect center or perfect zero. So when you let go of a remote control, it should go back to the zero position, but it doesn't always do that. And so what we've done is we've built in a threshold that says, I need to move my remote control up by about 10% before it will actually start getting data. And this is just a safeguard because what can happen sometimes is you'll let go of your remote control. The remote control doesn't go back to perfect center. And then it will just kind of hum or move really slowly and you'll be wondering, well, I'm not touching it, why is it moving? It's usually because the joysticks didn't go back to the perfect center and that's why. So that's what the threshold takes care of. So if we take a look at our picture here, we're gonna be using channel A and channel D in order to move our motors around uh, on our robot. And in order to use this in our program, because our defaults are set up for the normal tank control mode, uh, we just have to put in tank control, no parameters at all, because there's no data, it'll just use all the defaults. If you decide for some reason that you want to use the horizontal joysticks, so the channel B and C instead, you can do that by sending over. And then also if you wanted to just increase the threshold, maybe your joysticks need to be calibrated or they're a little bit more sensitive, you can send channel A, channel D, and 20. So let's take a look at how remote control will work with the VEX IQ system. So I'm gonna switch over to my desktop and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna save this program, file save as, and we're gonna save it as remote control. And I'm saving it because I wanna make a copy so that I can put it up on our uh, class site so that you'll be able to get access to it. So with this, we'll continue to set up the robot type as it is for our repeat. Remember, we said that we wanna use the repeat forever command. And inside of our, our curly braces, we're gonna put in a remote control command. So let's go ahead to remote control over on our sidebar here, and we have tank control. So we'll click and drag tank control into our program, and there we go. And now we have all of these different parameters, but since we're just gonna use the defaults, we'll just simply say tank control. So now we've got our setting our robot type, we've got a loop that will repeat forever, and inside of our loop, we're going to do tank control, which will basically take that joystick data, process it, and let the robot uh, be able to work with it. Now, the other thing that I need to do uh, right now, I'm just going to go ahead and power on my joystick and make sure that my robot has a link. And then finally, we're gonna switch our robot VexIQ controller mode from autonomous to teleop. And then from Telop here, we'll go ahead and we'll download our program. Hopefully everything will work. Uh, it's giving me an error message. It's saying that my, my joystick lost its communication. So give me just one second. Uh, all I did now is I just powered my robot off and turned it back on. So we'll try downloading it again. All right, looks like we're connected. So now I'm gonna go ahead and switch my presentation view so that we can uh, actually see our camera. So you can see that right now on my VEX IQ brain, I've got a little green LED that's blinking. And then on my game controller here as well, I've also got an LED that's blinking. So these two are blinking basically to tell me that I have a link between the two. So that means that everything's working. And now I'm gonna go ahead and click start on my program. And once I do that, I can now take my remote control and I can start driving my robot around just by moving my joysticks 
around, and this will let my robot start to to navigate, and then I can start driving a little faster, and it ends up being and moving pretty fast as well. But you can see that we were able to get a remote control program up and running with just three lines of code, basically a configuration, a loop, and the command of arcade control.